You guys should watch this now. So you can watch something like this. Only Asians can do this. Jackie Chan started this. That's one good editing skills, are you hooked? This is the only scene of this so enjoy. Come on you ugly bastard. Imagine that and think wow that's one of a lifetime. Imagine getting a role and this is the outcome. Jason Statham really did this. Okay, first off. This is not some erotica movie or anything like before or anything like that, it's an action movie. If you are part of this journey hit that like button and tell us what to review next and if you don't enjoy this then tell us too in the comments section to just stick with the romantic movies okay? Now, Jason Statham is one of the best actor there is. He is the only actor that should be playing all action role in this industry as he is one of the best out there. Are you ready to embark in this sci-fi movie? I'd say the editing here is so good that it's best to watch as they put so much effort into this and passing this one up is like passing a centerpiece in Ikea or something like that. If you were expecting Ben Wheatley to inject some of his exciting and boundary-breaking style from movies like Kill List and In the Earth into his work on the uninspiring Meg 2, The Trench, you'll be disappointed. You should look for a different, more engaging movie instead. Just like his terrible remake of Rebecca in 2020, Wheatley doesn't put much effort into this film. It's like he's using a very old landline phone to do so. Until the last 30 minutes, this movie is very boring. It's about a big shark, but strangely focuses more on an evil drilling operation underwater. This thing does not have any teeth. Jason Statham is not enjoying himself as much as usual in his latest role. He plays a deep-sea diver named Jonas who works at the Zhang Institute. This facility found a huge underwater predator called the Megalodon in the previous movie. The next part of the story shows that the research center has kept one of the creatures in captivity so they can keep studying it. Jioming, who isn't always reliable, is the leader of the institute. He mistakenly believes he can teach the Megalodon, but things go bad when it gets loose, and, no. This is not just a movie about a shark escaping and attacking people. It's more complicated than that, although it would be easier if it was just about that. Wait wait wait, anyone still here? Like watching this bit? Comment down below and also like the video. Give us a good rating or whatever rating you want to give us but the thing is, rate us. Okay? Okay? Do you want me to tell you guys another story? We do love romantic movies every now and then so you guys can enjoy pleasures or anything like that, we can always give you movies that we can enjoy and also look at things like that as that can give us another thing to pursue and enjoy. We always will give you what you want so it's best you tell us what's up okay? Okay we re going back. Instead of paying attention to the runaway Meg, who easily escapes while the crew is busy with something else, the writers John Hober, Eric Hober. And Dean Georgeris have the characters Jonas and his crew go deep into the ocean to the trench where the megalodons have lived for hundreds of years. As they are going into the dark and badly filmed ocean, Wheatley's way of making underwater pictures is just to reduce the light. They find other huge sharks. However, this is not as important as the cruel people who are also present in the deep trench, extracting resources. Yes, Jonas and his team find a bad operation in the ocean and it causes their boats to be destroyed. The part where they have to walk on the bottom of the ocean to reach a building is done very badly and is one of the worst in a long time. It felt like it was happening right now. In simpler terms, some characters without much personality are eaten or exploded, but most of the fake suspense is focused on Maying, Sophia Kai. She survived the previous movie and now Jonas is trying to protect her from the main monster. I can simplify the text for you, it's not really a surprise to say that Jonas, Jioming, Meiying, and a few others eventually escape the facility that is now filled with soldiers. The reasons for the soldiers being there are not important. They go to a resort named Fun Island, and after about 90 minutes of problems, the trench finally becomes a little enjoyable. 
So basically, the explosions under the water broke the shield that was keeping things like a huge octopus away from people who visit. In the end, Wheatley and his team finally have a small opportunity to enjoy themselves, but it's not enough and it's too late. Even the exciting last part of The Trench hardly feels like a play that is trying to be enjoyable. How can you create a movie with jet skiing, Jason Statham throwing harpoons at huge sharks, and yet lack any excitement or enjoyment? This film is strangely dull, lacking the usual humor and thrilling horror that Wheatley is known for. It seems like he stopped trying to do anything exciting once he realized he couldn't make it R-rated. Cliff Curtis and Paige Kennedy have a strange and unique friendship in the movie, which adds some humor and action to the story. However, their part feels disconnected from the rest of the movie. In Jonas' world, many people die without anyone paying attention to them, and it's easy to predict who will survive based on movie experience. There are no consequences in this place. But that's not always a problem. We watch big shark movies and are confident that Jason Statham will rescue everyone. This means that the focus is more on how things are done rather than being new, and maybe that's why Wheatley is not impressive in this case. It looks like he has to use storytelling techniques to be effective, but when he has to follow a traditional structure like he does here, he can't do it passionately. He simply goes through the motions without much effort. In the beginning of the movie, Juming gives a speech where he says that a person's imagination is the only thing that can limit them. Unfortunately, the movie that comes after doesn't have much of it. Thank you for joining us on this epic cinematic journey. We've explored heart-pounding action, breathtaking sequences, and gripping narratives together. As we come to the end of this thrilling ride, remember that the spirit of adventure and excitement lives on. Although our current adventure may be concluding, the thrill of action and the memories we've shared remain etched in our minds. Stay connected, stay curious, and keep seeking new horizons of excitement. Keep embracing the adrenaline, keep seeking the unknown, and keep igniting that spark of adventure within you. As the credits roll on this chapter, remember that the excitement of action is always around the corner. Farewell for now but never farewell to the thrill of the action.